And uh, so the very first thing I did was try to educate myself about what was really the issue, what was the concern. And so um, I worked through reading through part of the ordinance and then started talking to uh, some of the Uber executives and said, listen, I, you know, I, I think we can work through this. Let's, let's, let's see what we can do. Let's, let's not wait till the last minute. Uh, let's see what we can what we can work out. So please tell us what some of your issues are, and we began a process of of talking to one another, which I think that's the very first step. Just communications. We just just talk, I, I, not making any promises, but simply wanted to understand what the issues were. So once I started to understand the issues, uh, I did feel that we could collaborate on something. Um, and what I was very appreciative was that the mayor allowed me to to sort of lead the effort. On this, so we sat down in a room, uh, several days, long hours. Who's we? Uh, I'll, I'll list. Uh, so it was myself, uh, two of our executives, uh, and um, uh, <clears throat> Eric Walsh, deputy uh, city manager, and the chief of police, uh, Tony Trevino, as well as the mayor's chief of staff, Jill De Young. And so, what we began on that process was just going through line by line and didn't allow uh, ourselves to get stuck. What I think caught them by surprise was that I really wanted to tackle this. And I said, listen, let's, let's just go line by line. And, and when we got to something, I, we, we just examined it. And if we got stuck, we went around it. We never stopped. We just kept moving. We were very positive. And so here's what's really important was that when we came up with some of this, this is truly this was truly a joint effort in which we were working together to to help establish real uh, a, a real amendment process process that that included some of their concerns. So, for example, you know one of the big concerns was was the fees. Um, we had a, a fee that was attached to every driver. They for some reason they they didn't want a, a fee that attached to every driver. So they offered to to pay. Uh, uh, a one-time fee. Well, our concern was, well, we don't know what your numbers are, so we don't know how many people we need to hire. If we need to hire one person, it was going to co- cost us around fifty thousand dollars to hire that one person. Now, the city's not in the, in the business of in terms these. of hiring one person in terms of, of enforcing well, ground transportation. To, well, to to to, to right. take to take in the administrative cost of taking in the material, right? To right. to uh, to process this, and so the idea was, well. Uber would pay half, and Lyft would pay the other half. So that's where they came up with the twenty-five thousand. And so then we, of course, we said, well, the only catch is that we'll, we'll do the twenty-five, but it has. To, we have to agree to some kind of a scale because if you get about above a certain amount of cars, we got to hire a second person. Then we'll have to, we'll have to increase that. But this was, this was uh, again, the twenty-five thousand was their idea. We, we we worked through it. We didn't we didn't allow that to stop us, and we said, look, that's fine. We just didn't want to be on the hook for. For uh, another person, and, and not ha- uh, have some way of paying for that person. Uh, another aspect was uh, the insurance. So, as, as they explained, the insurance uh, we have two positions. They have the, they call it position one and position two. I wish they would actually have position one, two, and three. But the way they explained it was position one is simply turning on the app. And in in the original ordinance, the the original ordinance called for commercial insurance on position one, but just turn on the app. If you turn on the app, all of a sudden you have to have commercial insurance on your car, and, and even USAA agreed, that's, that's, that's onerous, we can't, we can't do that. We worked through that, and it, by the way, that one was, we had to work through, because there was a lot of numbers, USAA came in also and helped out with, with, with a lot of that, at the last minute they also explained to us some of the language just needed to be changed. And that leads us to the other thing. So as we were going through this, we realized, you know, a lot of this stuff was just clarity. So one of those things was like spot inspections. They, 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 they had this idea that, that a police officer could pull you over and literally take your car apart if they wanted, but that's not the case. A spot inspection just needed some clarification, which we wrote into the amendment. Uh, we had other things um, like the English proficiency. Well, yeah, I, I'm somewhat of a tech uh, junkie myself, and I understood it was a simple uh, uh, miscommunication here. We don't need English proficiency because really the way the app works is there's no need for, for, for that kind of level of communication because there's no transaction, right? So the same app that you could use here, the way you would use it here, you would use it in Beijing, for example, 
right? And so that driver's not going to speak to you in English. They just know where to take you. The transaction's done. No money's changing hands, so you don't have to be worrying about it. So we knew this is not an important issue, so we, we, we simply lined that out. Other issues regarding the drug testing, for example. So uh, one of their big concerns is onboarding their, their drivers. They want to have a lot of drivers out there, a fleet of Uber drivers. And so um, their concern was that our uh, drug testing policy, which was a, a, a pre-onboarding drug test, would discourage many from, from doing that. And they, they argued that it's better to do a random drug test because if you don't know you're going to get drug tests, you wouldn't prepare for it. Well, we reviewed that with the chief of police. The chief of police said, you know what, that's actually accurate. So we all agreed on that and said, you know, that's okay. Well, we could, we could, we could certainly amend the, the, the ordinance to, to say that. That was also their idea, and, and we went with that. The paperwork that, that, that uh, in, the, in the original ordinance, there's a lot of paperwork that, that they wanted uh, each driver to come in and turn in. We didn't want to do that either. Um, and certainly, they don't want to do that. They're, they're every, their whole process is automated, and we're not in the business of trying to keep track of those kind of paper files. Uh, so we changed that too to, to be more automated. But the catch was that we're, we still had to keep the ten print fingerprints. Mm -hmm. That now they we went um, back and forth on that because they have a background check that's online. They, and they their claim was that their online background check is better than a 10 print FBI background check. Again, we put it through the test. So let's, 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 so let's talk about this. So let's see how is it that, that, that your background check could possibly be better than a 10 print. Well, they, they say they check court records, they, they, they cross-reference files, and I'm sure that does do a good job of, of, of communicating somebody's potential behavior uh, however, the one question I had that they could not answer was, what happens after that test or that online screening? What happens if, if somebody commits a major crime? Well, they admitted that there's, there's nothing. There's nothing that tells them that, that that person committed a major offense. The 10 print is the only thing that can tell you within 24 to 48 hours if somebody committed a, a serious offense, and we're talking about a it, serious offense, it notifies ground transportation. Yes, it, it, it absolutely does, and and so we we get what they call um, they call it a rap back, uh, which is basically a rap sheet, and it it just shoots it to 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 our police department, mm -hmm. and we're able to re, uh, to take this information and pull these people off the road. <laughs> Why do you think Uber backed out? You went back to the table, you gave them some of what they wanted. What happened? Why, why? They, they said that the deal breaker was the 10 print background check. Okay, and that was the one thing we were not, as a council, we were not willing to yield on that because- Fingerprinting. Fingerprinting as a method of verifying the identity of the person who's the uber driver now they have a background check system that uses various databases but you could be checking someone's background but if they're not who they say they are then you what are you checking so don't some of the other cities use 10 finger background yeah houston uses it and there's another city i think in ohio but what the uber folks said to me was that well it was a bad idea for us to agree to do that in those cities and so we're not going to agree to do it in san antonio and frankly that was not acceptable we felt this is the standard that we want to have in order to ensure the safety of our citizens and i think this week um in austin at the legislature where they were up there lobbying the state officials were asking the same questions about those fingerprints. And that is not an onerous requirement. I mean, city employees have to have them, teachers, architects. So I, I think it's a real reasonable request. Do the current cab drivers yes. have to have them? So taxi yes. cab drivers have to do it. Yes. Uh, you know, as an architect, I had to get fingerprint. School teachers have to get fingerprint. Many other uh, uh, professions have to be fingerprinted. And, you know, we see it it's not a complicated process. We rolled back just about everything 
in the original ordinance. And you added a grace period, right? We did add a grace period. That's exactly right. Because, again, we wanted to address the, the number one concern was they said that they wanted to have more people onboarded. They didn't want to deter people from onboarding. It's the, the time, the grace period doesn't start until you literally take your first uh, ride. And so that from that moment, that starts your two-week grace period. you got two weeks to go to five different locations here in San Antonio to get fingerprinted, which is digital. It's about $45 and takes about 15 minutes. It's not a complicated process. I've spoken to some Uber drivers who are not opposed to this. I've spoken to all every uh, whatever every uh, neighborhood association that I've that I've attended that have brought up this whole issue. And I explained this part. They they also don't understand what seems to be the big deal. Um, and so we don't know other than well, they just want to have uh, a, a process to onboard people that is not restrictive, but. We know that uh, as a city council, we got to be responsible for our public safety. And like I mentioned before, our chief of police is the only one that we truly ha have at, at our disposal to, to advise us mm -hmm. what's safe for our public. You know, we, we have a responsibility. And so that's essentially what we did. Now, once we got to that point, that was, the, the, in essence, the, the bulk of the entire ordinance. Got up, we shook hands, and we said, "Okay, let's." We got very little time. We want to get this to a vote. They they flew down their attorney, who used to work for the Department of Justice, by the way, and met with our city attorney, and then uh, my representative Jed Mavius, who's also an attorney, sat in a room, the three of them, and wrote the language that is the amendment today. So they were a part of that process. When all that was was written, uh, at the eleventh hour, uh, we're coming in. For for uh, for a council vote, and of course they're in the newspapers saying that they're going to pull out anyway. Uh, that, that this was way too onerous. Um, yeah, it it's, it was it was unfortunate. It it almost I can say that it almost did wreck the vote because people were were were, were shocked that we we seem to have had a deal. Uh, we we negotiated in good faith. They co-wrote the amendment, and um, and then decided that. That you know they're gonna they're gonna let they're gonna make people think that that we're we're creating another process that's way too onerous, when in fact this is a much better pro this is a much better amendment much better ordinance altogether, and um, you know ultimately you can see now that really what they've done is they 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 decided to move their their efforts to the state level, uh, and and see what they can get at the state. You know I think that San Antonio really led. Uh, in, 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 in getting this amendment process, we showed real leadership, and 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 I want to say that you know San Antonio is a progressive city. We do understand technology. We have great technologies that are born right here in downtown San Antonio, and we we get it. Uh, this is this is not uh, something that is uh, uh, foreign to us, uh, but we also have a responsibility to to our city and the uh, as, as well as the safety of our, our of our constituents. So. This is really important. I think uh, you guys did a great uh, uh, mock-up of the compared uh, ordinances uh, in different cities, and it showed showed what we're really talking about and what we're really doing, and that this, this is not uh, uh, something that was onerous or, or backwards. Can you tell me the city council have plans to readdress any current regulations over the taxi cab? Yes, we do, and certainly that that's as I was negotiating these. Mm -hmm. Uh, know that the taxi cabs came to me, and um, I mentioned to them we were negotiating the ordinance as it related to the TNCs. They mentioned that they had some things that they felt they were onerous. I said, "Well, then, then, then this is serving a mod for a mo as a model for how we address yeah. other issues because we don't want things that that, that are that are uh, no longer pertinent." They don't relate, uh, and certainly onerous to to any kind of business. And if we can if we can remove some of those things, then that's our responsibility. Well, I think people need to know that that Uber is still operating. And I, I you know, the, I, I know I went to an event on Friday and I saw people being dropped off by Uber. Um, so you know, they they are operating. And I you know, again, I, I, I as, as it from. Uh, from a personal standpoint, I see how other people really uh, have benefited from this. I hope they come back. I hope that they could just simply, uh, you know, sort of uh, let their let, let let this tactic go and come back. They're welcome here. We got Fiesta coming up. We could use them here. 
but, but they have to follow uh, certain lines of regulation that they agreed to, that they co-wrote.